Hi, I'm Melissa Mulholland and I'm a paediatric registrar at the Royal Belfast Hospital for Sick Children. Today we're going to talk you through a paediatric ABCDE assessment for you to use if you're asked to assess an unwell child. Don't forget any stage to call for help if you've got a sick kid in front of you, you need lots of hands. Um, and the other thing is don't forget to treat things as you find them. So um, it's okay to move on to the next system so long as you've started to treat the problem that you've seen. So starting with A for airway, you need to look, listen and feel for airway patency. So you're going to look at the lips and the mouth to see if there's any obvious swelling that could signify anaphylaxis, any discoloration, rash, cyanosis. And then you can look in the mouth to see if there's any foreign body or other obstruction. You can listen for added sounds, so strider um, might be a foreign body or creep commonly in children. Um, you might notice drooling or snoring as well. If you are worried about an airway issue, it's really important to keep the child as calm as possible and to get expert help as soon as possible. So make sure you leave the child alone, leave them with their parent or carer wherever they're happiest, um, and then phone for ENT and anaesthetics. If you think the child could benefit from some oxygen, you could pass this to the parent and carer to hold near them and see if they tolerate that. But um, if they don't, if it upsets them, just take it away. You're better off to, to leave it until you've got expert help there. Definitely avoid putting in any um, cannulas or other needles until you've got that team there to help you out. So moving on to B, you need to assess your child um, for respiratory rate and work of breathing. So make sure you expose your child, count your respiratory rate as you normally would, um, and then look for work of breathing. So things you might see are head bobbing, tracheal tug, nasal flaring, sternal recession, subcostal recession, intercostal recession, um, and abdom abdominal muscle use or accessory muscle use as well. An older child might position themselves into a tripod position, so sitting upright with their hands planted on the bed to also help with their work of breathing. You want to get a SATS um, up, so you need to apply your SATS crew. And at this stage, if your SATs are low, then you'd need to start oxygen if you haven't already. So in an unwell child, we would start with a non-rebreather mask. Make sure you inflate the bag by occluding the hole and starting at 10 litres of oxygen and see how they get on with that. You then want to have a listen to the chest. So make sure you listen to both sides alternately. You want to listen into the axilla and also posteriorly as well. We don't always fill for tracheal deviation, but if you're worried about unequal air entry or if there's a history of trauma or you're concerned about pneumothorax, you can definitely fill for this um, as well. So once you've done your B assessment, you can move on to C. So um, you'll hopefully have your heart rate from your SATs crew and then you can assess your capillary refill time. So you want to do this centrally, either on the forehead or usually on the sternum. Press down for five seconds. One, two, three, four, five. And check how long it takes to refill. So one, two, three. And a cap refill, more than two seconds is prolonged. You can also check your peripheral perfusion, um, just noting how cold or um, if the hands and feet are discoloured at any stage as well. You might notice muffling in a baby too, which can be another sign. You need to assess your pulses. So um, in an infant under one, it's really important to feel your femoral pulses, both sides. And if it's an absent or weak femoral pulse, you'd be concerned about coarctation. So you need to get a cardiology assessment. In an older child, you can just feel for your radial or carotid as you would. Um, for your normal volume and rhythm. You need to do a blood pressure. So paediatric blood pressure cuffs come in a range of sizes and it's important to know how to pick the right size cuff um, because cuffs that are too small will artificially um, give you a higher blood pressure reading. So a cuff to fit, the bladder part of the cuff, which is the bit that inflates, needs to, needs to wrap around the whole circumference of the arm, or at least 90% of it. So I've already measured this cuff and this goes around the arm, uh, whereas this one only went around about 60%. So you can pop that on and it'll usually take a couple of minutes for you to get your blood pressure reading through.
And then if you didn't hear the heart when you were listening to the chest in B, you need to listen for your heart sounds as well. Moving on to your D disability assessment, then hopefully throughout the assessment so far, you might have a feel for how your child's behaving, if they're behaving and moving normally, or if they're lethargic. A quick way to assess consciousness level in, in a recess scenario is your ABFU score. So A is for alert, B is responsive to voice, P is responsive to pain, and U is unresponsive. If you've a score of P or U, you'd be worried about how secure their airway is, so definitely get anaesthetic down. Um, GCS is a little bit harder or more complicated to assess in children because of their different developmental ages. So ABFU is a very really quick tool to use in this situation and you can go on to assess their GCS in more depth after you've done your primary survey. You also want to feel for a fontanelle and a baby to feel if it's full or if it's sunken or if it's normal tensive. And then you want to check pupils, so are they even, are they equal and reactive to light? Don't ever forget your glucose, so if you haven't done blood since C, now's a good time to get your glucose checked. And then you need to move on to E for exposure. So for clues in the name, you need to fully expose your patient. And it's really important that you do that. You can cover them back up like after you've looked at every bit. So make sure you're looking at the front and to the armpits. Make sure you remove any nappies and have a look at the genitals. And then don't forget to roll them on their back. And make sure you check their back and their buttocks as well looking for any rashes or other injuries or anything like that. You want a temperature as well during E and then you can do an abdominal examination and any other examination that you think is relevant after you've done your ABCDE assessment or from your history suggests you might need to examine anything else. So that is your ABCDE assessment in a paediatric patient. Key things to remember follow the system, treat problems as you find them, and don't ever forget to ask for help.